It's not about picking stocks. It's about picking the right portfolio. 78% of stocks were down yesterday. I think only 10% of stocks are above, are their, move, their moving averages are intact. To what extent? What did I say uh, was intact? I think you said only 10% of 50-day moving averages are intact. Yeah, 11% of the S&P 500 is 50-day, stocks are above their 50 days. So even to the moving monkeys, it's getting dangerous. I think I know the answer to this, but do you ever look at data points like that and think, okay, that this is a contrarian indicator, like oversold or whatever? Because no. <laughs> and, and you know, I think it's actually a good learning moment for me because I often have looked at this stuff in the past and been like, well, it's at such an extreme now; it's got to bounce. But I think you know something you say a lot is things crash from oversold levels. Right? Yeah, which I is, mean, which is something you got to keep in mind. Uh, no, I don't look at their indicators, and because yeah. their indicators have gone bearish, say that that's a contrarian buy signal because I don't use their indicators to buy or sell. Yeah. So no, <laughs> but what I do do is what I've done today, which is I look at all of it, not just the 50-day moving monkey, and I pull out the divergences, which is why it's such a dangerous day, right? So. What did I say this morning, Josie, right? I said, okay, look, if you look at one IWM, which we're short, minus 1.6%, uh, minus 12%. This is like since August 1st, August 1st, and this is yesterday, okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's 12%, All right? Two, RSP, the equal weight S&P 500, minus 1.1% yesterday. Three, S SPY equals 0.0, .0 yesterday because seven stocks were up plus two. Seven stocks, right? So I look at that and I, I look at all that and I look at my signal on these seven stocks and five out of the seven, or at least four of the, the big ones, Microsoft and Apple in particular, are bearish trend. So I, see, I was shorting Apple yesterday. I can't short Microsoft because Ami covers it, right? So this is what I do, Jonesy. I start to go deeper into, okay, what are the things that haven't gone down because this is economic gravity, and why wouldn't they go down? I mean, I'm old enough to remember that the last bull case on, on the magnificently you know, manipulated seven was lower interest rates. <laughs> so you know, I'm looking deeper, deeper, deeper. If you, if you take this again, I look at the baskets, okay? I, one, the, uh, if you look at yesterday's action, Forget what I just said for a second, because that's like so headline uh, in nature. Did you know that the most um, the most short basket at Goldman Sachs minus another three and a half percent on the day? Right? Ha ha! Shorts getting squeezed. Not anymore. Uh, for going on seven eight weeks now, shorting shit has worked out wonderfully. Uh, so that's that's working into a recession as it would. Uh, number two, no profit technology. No profit for you. So remember the time when we had a banking crisis and these banks were going under because they had profitless clients? Well, that's still the case, right? So this basket yesterday, Jonesy, was down 1.5%. Again, three, not what the SPY did or seven stocks. So when I look at the number, like all I've done so far is I go through my process every single day the same way in the same order from 4.30 in the morning till whenever I go to bed at night and I get through all the options data. I never look at, oh, this sounds like a sounds or feels like a contrarian oversold signal. No, I actually have the red eye on and I'm short. So um, that's what I think about that. And if you don't like being short, then buy some of our longs. If you don't like our longs because they go down, then don't buy the longs. You know, <laughs> lots to think about there. Again, I, it's it's points in time like this where people might get too bearish. But like you said, yeah. markets crash from oversold levels. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.